Welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demo. I'm calling it oscillations with a spring and a ruler. So uh, I have set up a system here. I'm uh, hanging a spring. Um, I'm hanging a ruler from a certain point, pivoting it about a certain point on the ruler. And then I have a spring here. So then I, if I displace it from equilibrium, it's going to make simple harmonic motion. I'm going to be measuring the period of that motion. Then I'm going to do the prediction based on theory. What should the period be? And then I'm going to compare the two. So let's do the experimental result now. Uh, let's uh, write down where this pivot point is. It's at the mm, 15 centimeter mark. So it's a one meter stick. The pivot point is at the 15 centimeter mark. Right, and then the spring here is connected to the 65 centimeter mark. 65 centimeters. And considering the force like this, spring constant Kx, right, uh, uh, the Hooke's law. And then the weight of the ruler is also going to cause a torque on the ruler. So it's going to go back and forth due to two torques. The torque due to the spring force Kx and also the torque due to its own weight. The other thing I need to do is measure the spring constant of that spring. So I have a similar spring to that with me. What happens when you first connect it is you get this plot, a graph of force versus time, right? And then you can press play. And then on the instrument here, on the force sensor, you press a zero, and then it goes down to zero. So remember, notice here how the force originally was some value and it goes down to zero. So now I have zeroed the force sensor. So then I apply the, I can connect the spring from here. And then the bottom of the spring is at the nine centimeter mark, right? All the way to the 29 centimeter mark. So pull it, hold it at the 29 centimeter mark and then press play. Okay, then let go. So I stretched it by about 20 centimeters from 9 to 29. I stretched it by 20 centimeters. And then I go to the tools here and I go to statistics. And it for tells me the average force was 0.72 newtons. It took 0.72 newtons of force. Okay, so this uh, force equals to Kx, 0.72 newtons of force. And then the, the amount that I stretched it was 0.2, uh, 20 centimeters from the 9 centimeter mark to the 29 centimeter mark, right? So then the K is going to be 0.72 over 0.2, and then the decimal moves over. So you got 7.2 divided by 2, 3.6 Newton per meter. So the spring constant of that spring is not very stiff. It's 3.6 Newton per meter. I know it's at the connector to the 65 centimeter mark right at the bottom at the 65 centimeter mark now I'm ready to actually perform my experiment okay ready set go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay I got 7.38 seconds so I'll do it a couple times 7.38 seconds divided by 10, that's going to give me the period for one oscillation, 0.738 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 7.65 seconds. 7.65 divided by 10, 0.765. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, seven point five eight seconds. So then I had seven five four seconds. Okay, now let's calculate the theoretical. Okay, it's fifteen centimeter mark. This is point uh, one five meters. The distance between here and here I'll call D between the pivot point and the center of mass. This is mg. And then the distance to the where the spring is, okay, I'll call um, big D, right, from the pivot point to where the spring is. And then the force of the spring is in this direction, Kx, okay. So 
we're going to apply the equation torque is equal to moment of inertia times alpha. The torque due to the weight is equal to the little d times mg times the sine of this angle. If this is here theta, so it's going to be sine of this angle, little d times mg times sine of the angle theta, right? And that is in which direction? It's out of the board, right? So that mg causes the system to go this way, right? The kx basically is in the opposite direction. So big D times kx, it's into the board. So what will happen, the weight will tend to make it want to go down, where the spring is pushing it back, right? So it's, the torque is fighting against that. So big D kx is out of the board, uh, it's into the board, right? So then you're going to do minus big D kx, right, times the sine of which angle? Well, sine of this angle, or it's going to be sine of this angle, right? So uh, it looks like this, like this, like this, big D kx. So you could do sine of either this obtuse angle, or you could do the acute angle theta. So now, is this the same as the theta here? This is theta. Is this angle the same as that? It turns out that it's actually not, right? It's going to be um, this theta and this theta is the same. This angle is going to be 90 minus theta, right? 90 minus theta. So uh, it's going to be big D kx sine of 90 minus theta, not sine of theta. So that's an important point. Sine of 90 minus theta. It's the complementary angle to theta. So big D kx sine of 90 minus theta, and that's going to equal to the moment of inertia about the pivot point. The pivot point, the moment of inertia of this shape. So I'll say I pivot point times alpha. Then I can put a negative here because what happens, the torque on the system is such that it always wants to reduce the theta. It always wants to make it go back to the equilibrium point, right? So just to make the signs work out right, you put here minus, okay? So then uh, I'm going to start simplifying this. This is going to be dmg, right? I'm going to use the small angle approximation again, right? Sine of theta for small angles of theta, and for every oscillation problem, we use this small angle approximation. Sine of x is equal to x for small angles. So this is going to be theta minus dk sine of 90 minus theta is cosine theta, right? dkx cosine theta, negative i pivot point alpha, okay? Now, what's the small angle approximation for cosine theta, right? So what's, the, what's that? Two factorial. For very small angles of theta, if the angle is very small, I can ignore even the second order of the Taylor series, and I can say for small angles, cosine of x is approximately equal to 1, okay? So I'm assuming that we haven't displaced this by very large angles. So the uh, small angle approximation for cosine theta is just 1. The next thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about this x value. What is that x? Well, that's the amount that we have displaced the the we have compressed the spring imagine so there's a spring here this is at this point x would be zero the spring would be its natural position right so now if i displace it a little bit this way right i am pushing the spring in by an amount x so that's the the meaning of the x by pushing it in a bit the spring is going to exert a force back. Now I could do the opposite. I can go back this way, and then I can extend the spring a little bit amount, right? And then the spring will pull back. So this distance will also be x. So now the idea is to relate x to the angle theta somehow. What's that going to be? Okay? So then if you look at this circle, you can see that even though this is a straight line, it could be modeled as an arc like this, like this. So even though this line is more like a triangle, it looks like this, like this, like this. It looks more like a straight line, like a triangle. It could be modeled as a curve like this. All right? So this x is also equal to the x along the arc length of the circle. All right? So 
Because why? Because x is assumed to be small. We're doing small displacements from equilibrium. So x along the arc length and x in the horizontal position is the same, right? So then what I'm going to say x is just simply equal to the distance from here to here, which I call big D. So remember, the spring wasn't connected to the way at the bottom. The spring was connected somewhere random. So I'm going to take big D, and then I can multiply that by the angle of the displacement, the theta. So its natural position is this position. When I displace it from that position, I'm giving it a certain angle of theta. So that I can say x is equal to D times theta. So then I can say here dmg theta minus dk, and then x is equal to what? Uh, d theta. d theta is equal to negative i pivot point alpha. Okay? So now actually we can combine this. We're going to have here dmg minus big D squared k theta negative i pivot point alpha. Okay? So now the last step remaining is to bring everything over to the left side, make it look like a differential equation. Okay, so then I have here i pivot point, the second derivative of theta, because this alpha is the rate of change of the rate of change of the, L, the theta, right? So then you bring this to the left side, then you have here dmg minus d squared k theta, that's equal to zero. Again, you now model this like the spring problem. Remember, for a spring, force equals negative kx, which equals ma. m second derivative of x plus kx equals zero. And then omega is square root of k over m. So the radial frequency of the oscillations of that system is whatever is in front of the x over whatever is in front of the second derivative. So in our case, the radial frequency of the oscillations is going to equal what? square root of, and then the k is going to be whatever is in front of the data, dmg minus d squared k, divided by whatever is in front of the d squared x, which is going to be i about the pivot point. And then the period is equal to 2 pi over omega, so 2 pi i pivot point over dmg minus d squared k. So what is this telling you? Because you have the spring, that will tend to, if the spring wasn't there, this piece would be missing. The ruler would go back and forth without this proportion on it, right? So it'll just be i pivot point over dmg. But because there's a spring, it's going to reduce the denominator of that expression. It's going to reduce this. And it's going to make the period larger, okay? Now at this point, I actually caught myself making a mistake because look at this, the logic of my argument immediately dawned upon me and it doesn't make sense that with the spring the system should go back and forth with a larger period. It should actually be quicker. It should be going back and forth quicker. So what mistake have I made? This, is, this teaches you something very crucial in physics. It's not just about equations and formulas and just doing everything right, getting an answer. It's after you're deriving something saying, what does this show? What does this tend to do? And does that make sense? If the spring is present, that will tend to reduce the denominator and increase the period. Hmm. It doesn't make sense that the ruler should go back and forth slower with a spring on it. The spring should actually be making it go back and forth quicker. So what mistake did I make? There's a little subtle mistake I made. Remember when I set it up, I said, if I displace it from equilibrium, I have the mg, then I have the pivot point, and then I said the force of the spring is this way, Kx. Right? It's pulling, it's pulling on the rod. Okay, I made a big mistake. Here is the mistake. If I displace it from equilibrium, let's say the equilibrium is like this. If I displace it from equilibrium to the left, what's this spring gonna do? It's gonna actually push it back, right? It's gonna push it this way, Kx. Right? 
So the torque due to the Kx, big D Kx out of the board, is in the same direction as the torque due to the weight, little d mg out of the board. They're both making it go back to equilibrium. So that means this should be a plus, and this should be a plus. You see there? That's a huge mistake that I made. It should be pushing it back. The weight should be wanting to make it go down. The spring should make it want to make it go down. Now let's put in all the uh, equations. Okay, so then you're going to have here the period, 2 pi. So what's the moment of inertia of the ruler about the pivot point? Well, the moment of inertia of a ruler with respect to the center is 1 12 times its mass times its length squared. So it's a one meter stick. Plus the parallel axis theorem says shift it from here to here. Plus m times this distance squared. And that's distance that I call d, right? md squared. Then I'm going to divide that by dmg plus d squared k. 2 pi square root of, uh, so then you're going to have here uh, 1 twelfth m. Uh, then I'm going to say plus m. Now what's d? Since the, this is 50 centimeters, is the center of mass, the distance between the pivot point and 50, that's going to be 35 centimeters, right? So d is equal to 35 centimeters. Then convert that to meters, right? It's going to be 0.35 meters. Divide that by, and then the same d goes here, 0.35. Then M, then 9.8, plus the big D is going to be what? 65 centimeter, 15 centimeter, right? So from the 15 to the 65 is 50 centimeters, right? 50 centimeters from the pivot point to where the spring is. So big D is equal to 50 centimeters. <coughs> okay, so then uh, convert that to meter, that's a half a meter. So then you got here 0 0.5 meters squared times the k value, so then I do 3.6. So the only thing left to do is measure the mass of this ruler, okay? Now let's take the ruler out and then weigh it here on the balance. 127.8 grams, 127.8, okay? So M, 127.8 grams, and then of course if you change that to kilogram, 0.1278. So then we can put that in there, and we can calculate the period. Period is equal to 2 pi square root of 1 twelfth, 0.1278 plus 0.1278 times 0.35 squared over 0.35 times 0.1278 times gravity, 9.8, right, plus 0.5 squared times 3.6, okay? So, okay? so the answer that I'm getting for T theoretical is 0.88 seconds. So you can see I'm close 0.75 but I'm off a little bit my experimental period was smaller okay so there could be various sources of error reading the k value right and uh, also determining what's a full cycle maybe I didn't count the cycles correctly so you can see I'm in the same um, region but I'm a little bit off so this is how to calculate the theoretical period and then you can see how I caught the mistake in the plus sign, the logic of that, okay? And then compare it to my experimental. So then my percent error is going to be 100% times 0.88 minus 0.754 over 0.88, okay? A good example of a torque problem moment of inertia, spring constant, everything together, and then the small angle approximation, and then they're using the result from the period of uh, oscillation of a block and a spring, okay? Thank you very much.